What are fractional exponents? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Fractional exponents can be pretty confusing when we first encounter them. We know that 4 to the power of 2 is 16. Nice and easy. That's just 4 times 4. But what the heck is the meaning of 4 to the power of 1 half? Well, there's no need to be nervous about fractional exponents. They're just another way of representing things we're already familiar with. So if fractional exponents are just another way of representing something you already know, then why bother using them? Well, if you've ever tried calculating a square root or a cube root on a calculator, I think you'll find fractional exponents very valuable. So let's get on with it. What the heck does 4 to the power of 1 half mean? Well, if you'll humor me, let's go ahead and square this quantity. What is this equal to? If we remember our exponent rules, we can simplify this by multiplying this exponent of 2 by this exponent of 1 half. That will give us 4 to the power of 1 half times 2. 1 half times 2 is just 1, so this is 4 to the power of 1, which is just 4. So wait a minute, what did we just do? We just said that 4 to the power of 1 half squared is equal to 4. Well, then by definition of square root, 4 to the power of 1 half, let me write that down here, 4 to the power of 1 half must be the square root of 4. It's the quantity that when squared gives us 4. So that's basically what fractional exponents are. They're just another way of writing a root. And remember that there are more than just square roots in the world. We've got square roots, which we usually just write like that. But we've also got cube roots, and fourth roots, and fifth roots, and so on. The square root of a number is the number such that when you multiply two of them together, you get the number under the square root. The cube root, or third root, of a number is similarly the number that when you multiply three of them together, you get the number under the square root. And of course, this pattern continues with the higher roots, like four, five, and so on. All right, so this is all pretty snazzy. Let's check out a couple more complicated examples to wrap things up. Suppose we have 32 to the power of 3 over 5. So what is this equal to? Well, with our exponent rules, I guess I'll move this down a little bit, we can rewrite this as 32 to the power of 1 over 5, all raised to the power of 3. Because, of course, we could just multiply these exponents together, and we'd get what we started with. Then, using our knowledge from the previous example, we can rewrite this as a root of 32. But which root? Well, the fifth root. And then, all of this is getting cubed. So here's the idea. With a fractional exponent, the denominator tells us what root to take. The numerator is left as an exponent. And it actually doesn't matter if you take the root first or if you raise to the power first. To see that, notice that we could also rewrite 32 to the power of 3 over 5 like this. 32 to the power of 3 to the power of 1 over 5. Just as before, we could multiply these exponents together. We know that we'd get what we started with. So then we could rewrite this as 32 to the power of 3 and then that one-fifth exponent tells us we're taking the fifth root of this. So these are equal. However, you might notice that one of these is easier to compute. It doesn't really matter if you have a calculator, but offhand, I don't know what 32 to the power of 3 is. I could figure it out, but it'd be easier to look at this expression, because I know what the fifth root of 32 is. The fifth root of 32 is just 2 and then that needs to be cubed, so this is equal to 8. And we would get the same thing down here. I just plugged 32 cubed into a calculator. It is 32,768. And then the fifth root of this is equal to 8. Of course, I know that offhand. Everybody knows the fifth root of 32,768 off the top of their head. All right, a couple more quick examples, and I'm just going to make these up randomly, so if you were to compute them, they would not come out to nice numbers. Let's say we had 9 to the power of 7 over 4. What is the meaning of this fractional exponent? Well, remember, the denominator tells us the root that we should take, so we take the fourth root of 9. 
The numerator is left as an exponent, so we raise this to the power of 7. Should we do another example? I think so. How about it? Let's say we have uh, 54 to the power of 19 over 21. Really nasty. What is this equal to? Well, the denominator tells us the root we should take. So we're going to take the 21st root of 54, and then the numerator is left as an exponent. Raise this to the power of 19. So hopefully you're finding that this isn't all that tricky. The really useful thing about fractional exponents is that they can easily be plugged into a calculator. Not many calculators have quick access to the 21st root function, but you can pretty easily raise 54 to the power of 19 divided by 21. I also think it's a little bit easier to write fractional exponents than these nasty roots. Using fractional exponents can also make things easier to simplify sometimes. For example, let's say we had something nasty looking like the 12th root of 8 raised to the power of 4. What is this equal to? Well, you probably have no idea. If you just showed me this, I'd have no idea what it's equal to. But we could rewrite it as a fractional exponent to make it a lot easier. Since we're taking a 12th root, we know we should have a denominator of 12. Since we're raising to the power of 4, our numerator will be 4. So this is just 8 to the power of 4 over 12. We can simplify this fraction. That's 8 to the power of 1 third. And what is that, my friends? Well, that is the cube root of 8, which I know is 2. So pretty snazzy. Fractional exponents aren't all bad. I certainly think this is a lot nicer than this. One last thing, let's just touch on negative exponents. Negative fractional exponents work the same way negative exponents always have. Let's say we have 15 to the power of negative 3 over 7. A negative exponent just means we're taking the reciprocal. So this is equal to 1 over 15, and now we have a positive exponent, 3 over 7. If you've got a negative exponent, just send it on down to the denominator with a numerator of 1, and then your exponent is positive. So that is what fractional exponents are, and why we would ever want to use them to begin with. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.